Hey guys, welcome back to the Thoman Bedroom Producer channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at the new Logic Pro 11 update. And whether you're a seasoned producer or just starting out, I think this update has something for everyone. This update has been long awaited for Logic users after being on version 10 for over a decade. Version 11 is finally here. This update brings a host of powerful features with a heavy emphasis on AI tools with the stem splitter and session players, as well as a couple of less visible enhancements to help transform your music production process. If you've already purchased Logic Pro X at any point, this update is completely free. And the new features that are available on the Mac version are also available on the new iPad version as well, which is pretty cool. I actually started my music production journey using Logic Pro X, but over the last year, I kind of switched over to Ableton. So let's see if this update is good enough for me to make the switch back to Logic. So let's dive in and check out these new features. So now we've got Logic loaded up. So I want to take a look at the session player. Logic has previously had the drummer session player before, which worked relatively well, but the new features are the bass player and the keyboard player. So I've selected bass player, and on this drop down menu here, you can change the genre and style of the bass player. So I'm going to go for indie disco, and as you can see, it's just generated a bass line for us straight away. I mean, right off the bat, that sounds pretty cool. This feature up here is also new. It's the chord track. So this bass line is following these chords up here. You can change that chord progression up here to something else. So if I changed it to G major and click transpose, the chord progression is gonna change. So now we've got. And if you double click on the track, you get this little edit window down here where you can change the complexity, which changes how complex the bass line is. So if we drag this up. And with the intensity, that affects the dynamics of what's being played. Down here where it says follow chord rhythm, this basically shows you where in the progression that the notes on the chord track are most likely to sort of be played. So on this one, it's the beginning of every bar. So at the beginning of every bar, you get a G. Here you get an E, C, D, etc. But if I changed it to maybe this fifth one, those notes are gonna show up later on in the bar. And this is a useful feature to sort of add some variation. And if I open up the chord track here and gives you all these options of chord phrasings like major, minor, diminished, augmented. And if you click here under details, you can change how many slides are in the progression. And if you click here under manual, this is where you can really customize your pattern by drawing in where you want the notes to be played. So now let's take a little look at the keyboard player. So I'm just gonna open it up here. And in a similar way to the bass player, you have this drop down menu. So you have the option of your keyboard player to play freely, broken chords, block chords, arpeggiated or simple pad. I'm just gonna click simple pad for now and it will generate for you a pattern following the same chords as your project. And in this menu here with the hands, you can take out the left hand, which obviously takes out the lower bassier notes, or take out the right hand and have the left hand for just for a bass. And with these sliders down here, you can also adjust the voicings. So if you want it to be a lot higher, you can drag that up. And you've got even more manipulation over those voicings. You've got the root only, root and octave. 
So that's on the left hand. And then on the right hand for your chord voicings, we have a lot of different options down here. So that gives you a lot of options to manipulate the type of chords that are being played and it's not just sort of simple follow along with the chords that are written up there. You can make it sound a lot more interesting. And you also have presets up here. And if you want to change your original choice of keyboard player at any time, you just change it there. You can also change where the notes start. So if you wanted something to be a sound a bit more syncopated, you can drag that up. Or if you want it to come in slightly before the beat. And I thought it'd be worth mentioning that as well as the bass player, you don't have to use the original sounds. So if you wanted to change it to a horn line, you can do that here in the instrument selector. So we could go instead of retro synth, we could change it to studio horns. I want to take a quick look at the drummer because although, as I mentioned, this is already something that Logic had in previous updates, it's had a bit of a makeover and there's some updated features, so let's take a quick look at that. You can choose the style, I'll stick with the indie pop, and again, presets down here. So similar to the other two with the complexity and intensity sliders, what's different about this update is that you're able to choose two separate patterns for the kick and snare and for the hi-hat and toms. Whereas before you could only manipulate the pattern of the whole drum kit, now these are split into two to give you more room for customization. So those are just some of the patterns that you can choose from. You can also change the fill amount. And here under details, you can change the sound of a snare to a rim shot, side stick, or a tom. And the same with the hi-hats, you can choose from closed, half closed, open, wide open. You can also affect the amount of ghost notes as well. And again, like the bass and the keyboard, under this manual, you can use this to completely write the pattern yourself. So that's the end of the first part of this new update. So that's a way that you can adapt these session players into your own music production by using sounds that will really elevate the beat that you're making specifically, which I think is something that can be really helpful for beginner producers if they're struggling with a certain element in their beats. But the best way to use these tools is really to experiment. There's so many ways of changing and adapting the progressions that they're giving you. It gives endless possibilities of what you can really use it for. And now I want to take a look at something that I'm personally really excited about, and that is the stem splitter. So with the stem splitter, you can take a fully mixed song and separate it into different individual tracks. This is something I use quite a lot with remixes that I make. So I'll be really interested to see how it works on Logic, because there are other stem splitters out there, but there's not many that are actually within your door. I've got the song Espresso by Sabrina Carpenter because I'm currently making a remix of it. So here I've got the fully mixed song and I'm just going to right click onto it and click Stem Splitter. And here you've got the different options of vocals, drums, bass and other, which is like guitars and melodies. I want to keep all of them. So I'm going to click. That is really, really fast. <laughs> I wasn't expecting it to be that quick. Uh, other stem splitters I've used take a little bit longer than that, so right off the bat, that's quite impressive. So here we've got the vocals. Let's check out the drums. The bass. And the guitar.
And it's not only remixes that you can use the stem splitter for. If there's a certain take that you really like in your final mix and you've lost the original recording for some reason, it could be really useful to get it back using stem splitter. I think this is something that I'm going to be using a lot and I'm really impressed with the speed of it and the efficiency of it. It's really quick, really easy. You just right click and it's right there on your track. So yeah, I'm really impressed with that. It's obviously track dependent on how well this works, but it's a really cool feature to be able to have. And lastly, I wanted to take a look at an update on two of the Logic instruments. You've got updates to the studio bass and the studio keyboard. You've got classic 60s rock, session, modern and American upright. This 60s one, I believe, is modelled off Paul McCartney's signature Hofner bass. What you'll find on here that you didn't really have options for before is more parameters that affect how the instrument sounds and is being played. So you can change the playing style from finger to pick. You can also change it to slap, which is good for sort of disco and funk. And you can also change the volume and tone knob and if you're a guitar or bass player you'll be used to a sort of adjusting those to change the sound that you want. And with these sliders you can change how muted it sounds and under details you can even go as far as changing the amount of string noise like when your fingers are touching the strings how much you can hear that in the recording so you can even change that you can change the hum and hiss which you sometimes get from different amplifiers and also the amount of release notes and as well as a new bass player there is a new studio piano as well and these sliders let you dial in the different levels on the different microphones. So if you wanted a more stereo wide sound, you can tone those up. And if you wanted more of just the mono mic, you can affect that as well. And you can also change the pedal noise. So when you're hitting your foot on the pedal of the piano as you're playing it, you can change the amount of noise that comes from that. Or the amount of noise that comes from hitting the keys as well. I can really see the sort of heavy AI focus in this Logic update. And I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. Obviously, I think there's ways of overusing these tools. For example, having a track completely made up of all of these progressions, not manipulating any sounds and just keeping it as it is. But I think the majority of you would find that extremely boring. So I think the best way in using any of these is really just to experiment. And this is something that I don't see myself using all the time, but I think it's definitely useful in a case by case situation for maybe wanting to make your track sound more full. I think this could be really incredible for beginner producers and intermediate producers, especially due to how much you can manipulate the sounds. Being able to affect things like string noise, pedal noise can sound really small, but can really make the difference between something sounding really robotic and like an actual human has played it. The stem splitter for me is something that I think I'll use the most out of all of these things. But let me know down in the comments if you've used this Logic update and what your feelings on it are. Do you think the use of AI is good or do you think that it's maybe stunting some creativity in modern producing? Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe to the channel for more music production content and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care. Peace.